name is Colby Harvey. I am the CEO and founder of a company called Rise. Uh, so Rise specializes in the aerospace and defense industry. So we have developed a completely autonomous drone platform for aircraft fuselage inspections. So we work with customers in commercial aviation uh, and defense, uh, such as the US military um, and defense contractors. Did you say this is the day, this is official, I'm starting this? That's a good question. So when it comes to founding the company, I'd already been a part of another startup before and I had an itch because I know that I didn't want to just sit in someone else's company. I, I, I didn't want to just be a number in someone else's role book. So after the other startup that I was a part of, I was trying to figure out a good idea that meant something to me. Like, and for me personally, I've been in the aviation industry since I was a child. So I've always loved aircraft, I've always loved these giant magical buses in the sky taking people from one place to another. So I actually founded the company back in 2017 while I was still uh, in school. I was a uh, junior in college, I think. I was sitting in class, tasked to create an airline um, because I was went to school for aviation management. Prior to that, I was a computer systems engineer. Um, and it, it just kind of dawned on me that, you know what, we're all talking about making an airline. We're not talking about the crucial aspect that's keeping these airlines and these aircrafts afloat, and that's the maintenance side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you were 21 and you were sitting in class, what was the first moment that you felt, oh, this is real now? Like, now I'm on it and I can't go back. Oh, with my company? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <sighs> I, I guess I always felt like that, like, because when I jumped in, I jumped in. I didn't stick my foot in to feel the water. I'm just like, I don't care if this is Arctic degree temperatures, I'm jumping in. Um, and it, it started really dawning on me when I started asking some of my friends that I knew had specific skill sets if they you know, want to be with me. And they're just like, no, no. And I'm just like, that's okay. You can, I take rejection pretty, pretty well, honestly. <laughs> just like, oh, you're not interested? That's cool. That's great. Have a nice day. I appreciate it. Um, but I was resilient enough to know that for everyone that says no, there's someone that will say yeah. Well, and there will be hundreds of people that will say no. You will find someone that will want to work with you. You will find someone that will have that vision, or will want to join in that vision with you. How I got my first set of software engineers, I put in a proposal to the School of Engineering, and I just got a team of six awesome software engineers. One of those software engineers is now my CTO. Nice. Wait, let's step back too. So you went to ASU? Yeah, so I went to Arizona State University. Um, I studied computer science, so I was very familiar with SIDSI and their programs and how it works. So it was, for me to like find those people, wasn't it wasn't something that was super difficult. So are they graduates, are they students? They were undergraduates. Okay. So the initial set of like people that I had that um, really signed on, and they were just working on as a class project. Oh, okay. um, yeah, they were they were all undergraduate students doing the capstone when they saw it. I, you know, did what I could. I took out like a twelve thousand dollar loan so I could buy a ten thousand dollar drone <laughs> so they can have the resources they needed to for the project. Trust me, this is the debt part I was telling you about. Like, <laughs> but again, it was the most rewarding thing I've ever done. So what is your vision for this product? So my vision for the drones, um, ultimately the integration of, and advancement of drone technologies in the um, in industry as a whole, not just aviation, um, it, it is to increase efficiency, not only in the inspection process, but the processes that um, aircraft undergo when it comes to safety. Safety is the biggest component of uh, the aviation industry, and that's something that I want to ensure uh, is upheld. Uh, and the way my product's able to do that is something that will ultimately, I believe, lead the industry into its next generation. And how will your product do that? So, our product is, and this is not me kicking on the human inspectors. It's not, because ultimately the product is a tool. What we're doing is something that still needs to have an interface with actual humans in order to do the inspection process. But what we're able to do is we're able to retain the different types of um, 
damages, the different types of stress fractures, um, and retain all that information that's categorized and accessible at any given moment. Doesn't matter if it's two years down the line or 10 years down the line. If something happens to a specific aircraft, we're able to recall that information. We're using that to push the aviation industry to, from static maintenance, which means the scheduling is just, okay, after 3,600 flight hours come in, to more proactive maintenance, like there's a seasonality event over here, there's a thunderstorm, and there's aircraft has been prone to these types of strikes or um, these types of stress fractures happen and this altitude at this climate, we need to inspect this aircraft before something happens. Mm -hmm. So essentially the drones will check the plane for potential safety issues yep. and increase air time. That's actually exactly it. So the ultimate benefit for the airline using our drone product is the fact that we can cut aircraft inspections from 10 hours to about an hour, hour and a half, depending on the size of the aircraft. So you know there's narrow body aircraft, wide body aircraft that are particularly pretty large, so it might take more than one run. But we can decrease the downtime substantially by utilizing our product. So a lot of people, I feel like especially in this day and age, talk about like these ideas they have, but a very small amount of people actually do it. Mm. So what was your thought process or mindset or that motivation to actually turn it into a reality? That's also a really good question. And <laughs> I think a lot of people have been going back and forth between that same answer. Um, the thing is, if you're going to do it, you do it. Um, there's no, oh, I want to wait till I graduate, or I want to wait till I have this much money. If it's something that is important to you and that you see value in and that you see there's a market fit for, you go after it. That's exactly what I did. I didn't, I didn't, I did my market research after I came up with the idea. I tried, I did everything I could to understand the market. And then from there, I started dedicating resources. And this isn't just resources, that's my money, even though I did put it in my money. But it was my time, it was my effort, it was my motivation. It was precious hours I could have been using to study or to like work, I don't know, you know, on an extra shift at work, even though I didn't, that's not how my work worked. But I, I did it because I knew it was something that would be amazing for an industry that's been lacking change. Uh, and I wanted, I wanted to be at the forefront of that. typical day or a typical week is like for you right now? So a, a typical day for me is really me waking up, going to the gym, because you know, got to be healthy, <laughs> want to stay lean and look, you know, fit at least and feel good. Um, but after that, it's really diving deep into my work. So I, I, the first thing I do every morning is check my email. I ensure that I am on top of everything that comes through my box on top of every question that might come through, be it from investors, be it from customers. Um, and I make sure that my teams have what they need. The big thing about running a company, um, and if you ever read a book called um, How to Win Friends and Influence People, um, the biggest takeaway from that book for me um, was something that I didn't have to I didn't even have to implement like unnaturally, because I naturally did it. It's making sure that you are encouraging your team, encouraging the people that are following you and standing behind you and upholding your vision. So I share every day that my team knows that I'm doing that. Every day I say, hey, what do you guys need? If there's anything that you need from me, let me know. Even it's food, beer, wine, even just talk. I'm here. That's so important. Extremely. Mm -hmm. That's so essential to creating a productive and positive work culture, I think, to create that open line of communication and, and, and offer that support so openly and, and committedly. Mm. Awesome. So when it comes to hours, what does that look like for you? <laughs> That's a, another good question. I'm on 24-7. There's, for me, there's, there's, there's no stopping. I mean, like, one of my strategic advisors that I work with, one, it doesn't help that she lives in Israel, so I'm up random times of the night, but at any given moment, I'm 
I'm always actively prepared that I might have a phone call or I might need to check in on something or I might need to jump on top of something that may have happened while I wasn't even either at work. But I'm, I'm always also traveling a lot. So even when I'm a thousand miles away from my team, I make sure that I check in on, you know, make sure they're okay, um, seeing if they need anything um, and encouraging and encouraging them and motivating them and telling them that they're doing an amazing job because what they're doing is amazing, honestly. You think I'm the smart one because I started? No, it's those guys. <laughs> those guys are the geniuses. I was just able to cultivate their vision. So um, going back to your question, a day for me is always, but it's the most, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always, but it's the most invigorating, like rewarding experience, even if I don't get sleep until like one. <laughs> it's the most invigorating experience that I've ever had, ever had at a job because this isn't just a job for me this is a passion mm -hmm. that's that's special so the gym is pretty much your only you time mm, i mean i still try to make time for me it's really important that you do but like it's always like kind of nagging at the back of my head like hey even when i'm at the gym just like like just make sure that Okay, I'm good. Like, you know, I mean, even now, it's like I had a call from my attorney that I, one of my attorneys that I have to call back pretty soon. But um, I do, I do always make time for myself and for the people that I love as well because it's really important. Because otherwise, you're just gonna burn stuff out no matter how much you love something. Mm -hmm. And when you travel a lot, where are you traveling to? Oh gosh, um, uh, New York a lot. Um, Austin, um, we're in the process of moving there. Um, Michigan, San Francisco, um, Atlanta, uh, Indianapolis, Florida, like just all these places. These are just these are just nationally. Like, like in the next year, I'll be going to Israel, Poland, Germany, France, Ireland. Just these are just, just to name a few of the places wow. I'll be going. What brings you to all these places? Um, connections, relationships, customers, connections that I've made personally or connections that my advisors have made. And they want me to reach out and talk to these people because ultimately these I'm building relationships to um, expand my company, expand my vision, and ensure that we are the leading product in the aerospace and defense industry doing what we're doing, doing aircraft inspections. And then ultimately gathering those relationships and furthering those to different verticals like railway and um, heavy infrastructure, boats, things of that, that nature. Mm -hmm. How do you meet these mentors and advisors? It was, that's actually a really good question. I, I, I feel like when starting this company, I've had a path. Like there's been some path, and, and I'm not very religious at all, but I feel like there's been some path that's just laid out in front of me, and then all I have to do is walk it. Like one of my advisors who's my interim CFO, like I met him in class, he's one of my professors, and he took, and after we talked, like he immediately, he's like, I really like this kid, I really like what he's doing, I really wanna help him. One of my um, main development partners, he's now like a father to me, personally. Like he's just, he believed in my vision, he believed in what I was doing, and he believed in me, ultimately. And I can't tell you how much that really meant, especially from a guy of that stature. It's not like I actively, sought out these people, which there's nothing wrong with that. People can still do that. Mm -hmm. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. But I, I just feel like I've been able to either connect with people that can connect me with these people, mm -hmm. or they've just been introduced in my life without me knowing. Like, without really, like, I don't know how we're going to interact in the future, but somehow we are. So mm -hmm. that's just my mentorship experience. phase you're in and how you got your first customer? So we're in a phase that is, let's, let's say a pilot program. So ultimately at the moment in our development, um, th there's still quite a few development steps that need to be taken, um, w which of course, you know, costs money. But the, the way that I've met my initial early adopters or my initial pilot customers is through that mentor I was telling you about, that's a father figure to me, um, through, through him or um, just people that have been deeply interested in the product offering because of how the dynamics of the industry is changing. 
So the people that understand the benefits of what I'm working to achieve um, and how it can ultimately help them and make them more competitive in the market, those are the people that are taking full advantage of the product offering as it, is, as it stands now. Because for my company personally, we wouldn't be able to move forward or de develop further without the partnership of these people, without the partnership of these companies, without the partnership of these, indus these industry leaders. And what is a partnership in this context? In this context, partnership includes the use of their facilities. It doesn't necessarily mean money because what we're doing is ultimately it's, it's, go it's going to take a lot of training data. So for us, training artificial intelligence is not a, a fast process. It's not something, my products is not something that you can take off the shelf. You need to be able to train these, these resources. And so a partnership to me is their desire to move forward with the product once we reach a critical stage, um, but also their willingness to lend us their resources in order to capture the data that we need to ensure the product's viability in the market. major pros and cons about this type of work and this role? So, I'll start off with the pros, is to not scare anyone <laughs> <laughs> interested in becoming an entrepreneur. Um, really, a lot of the big pros are, 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 there's a lot of gratification. You feel really good at the end of the day, even if you don't sleep very much. <laughs> like, you feel, never use the T word, that's one thing that my advisor always told me. T word, tired, no one cares. If you're doing this, you're doing this because you're passionate about it and you have a drive to see this move forward. So, act like it. But the pros are, are really just the reward of not just closing deals, like having people believe in you is so fulfilling. Having people believe in you and give you money is that much more fulfilling, trust me. Um, I mean, the ability to work at your own pace or in your own schedule, quote unquote, <laughs> um, it's also, I mean, it's it's really nice. Like I, I and and not having to, not having to be talked down to by literally anyone that you you work with. Because I mean, we probably all have those experiences where you work with someone that's you know, probably not the nicest of people, and it's just like, wow, I don't, I really don't like you. You don't, you don't have that experience. Even if you're not a founder, even if you're just working with a startup, it's like cohesive. It's like a family, too. Now the cons, on the other hand, <laughs> that's a that's a fun one. Um, you know, you know, debt can happen. Uh, it, it does. Uh, I did go into a little bit of debt starting this company, but not ultimately for what we've done and how we moved. It was very, it was very much worth it. Um, time, time is extremely important. I live my life off of my calendar, and if you're not on my calendar, sorry, um, probably won't see you. Um, and I don't want to say alienation, but it, it, it does kind of feel that you disconnect from some of the people that you were maybe somewhat close with, but that, believe me, that's probably something that's in your head because the people that love you and care about you and the friends that are with you are always going to be with you no matter what. Even if you're gone for a year or two, they will always be there. Mm -hmm. It's just less time with them now, but it's not like they're going away. Yeah. Plus they know that I'm they're coming to my launch parties. <laughs> <laughs> to succeed in this field of aviation and or entrepreneurship, what path or steps do you recommend? So, I'll start from the aviation side. So, to, to be in the aviation industry, it depends on what you want to do. There's multiple parts of it, revenue management, maintenance, um, fleet management, things of that nature. Some of them do require you to attend college, but there's a, there's a big like leap from like just straight college education um, because that's taken away from a lot of the jobs that are necessary like plumbing and electrical work, A&Ps which is aircraft, uh, like airframe and power plants mechanics and those, you, you'll find those jobs are starting to become more and more lucrative um, as the need for those types of workers um, comes more to the forefront. So for the, the maintenance side, like specifically for the industry that I'm in, 
Uh, it's really important that you know, just look at trade programs, look at becoming an aircraft mechanic because, I mean, ultimately, you can make some really, really good money in that. Uh, now, when it comes to entrepreneurship, that's different. So, I personally am not of the belief that you can major in entrepreneurship. You can't. It, for me personally, no one can train you to be an entrepreneur. That's only going to happen when you want it to happen. So, what I mean by that is when a college offers an entrepreneurship major, take it with a grain of salt. If you're going to do something like that, ensure that you're getting your degree in something else. So, for me, my initial degree was computer science, or computer science engineering, one of the two. Um, but I switched to aviation management because I wanted to be in that field. Well, there's, there's no way, okay, may, an entrepreneurship degree may have like, helped me with more like business things, but these are things you're gonna ultimately learn along the way anyway. You're never gonna, like a school can never teach you what you're gonna do. Like a school's not gonna teach you how to talk to a multi-billionaire. It's just not. So ensure you are passionate about what you're doing and you're, you're getting a skill that's not just entrepreneurship, to be honest. Make sure you find and you do something that you care about, or I would say at least act like it, but you can't, you, you can't fake passion. Mm. Is there anything else that people should know about working in entrepreneurship? Um, there's risks. A lot of people, entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. It really isn't. There's many times where I've laid awake just like, holy crap, all this is happening. And it could be either for good or bad reasons. And the thing is, you have to be the type of person that can actually handle that. Um, if you are someone that's skittish, and if you are someone that even questions, you know, working for yourself or trying to start something because you're scared, don't do it. Because it's, again, it's going to be something that's very scary but also the most rewarding thing that you ever do. Minus having a kid, which I don't have. So, <laughs> um, but it's, it, it's definitely something that you need to have the mental fortitude and aptitude to take on. Isn't everybody scared to start? Yeah, but in that case, you gotta get, kind of be a little bit more stupid than, than scared. <laughs> like, <laughs> In my case, I feel like I was a little bit just more stupid than scared. Um, and I know how that kind of sounds, but I mean, I jumped. I didn't jump blindly. Obviously, I did my research. But you have to know how to do that research. But I mean, ultimately, if you're going to do it, to quote Nike here, just do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have any particular quotes or rules or concepts that help you succeed? Don't be afraid to fail, but <laughs> always get up. Don't let that failure define you. So I don't know who said that, probably someone smarter than me, but if they didn't, I'm coining it now. <laughs> um, but uh, just always ensure that you're uh, caring for the people that care about your vision. Again, don't know if anyone else said that. But if they didn't, I'm coining it now. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you, because I feel like failure is such, it can be such a powerful stepping stone. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, it's just, has such a negative connotation. Yeah. Can you expand on what sure. failure means for you? So for me, failure is you learning. Because if I did everything right the first time, then I wouldn't be going through the process that I'm going through now, raising money. You're, you're never going to be immediately perfect and great at everything. You're just not. That's just how life is. And for me personally, you suffer through imposter syndrome. Like, holy crap, this is me. I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm about to close this $250 million deal. Like, there's just all these things. I'm not, but I wish I was. <laughs> but, I mean, there's, there's all these things. So failure is you're a stepping stone, and if you let it define you, you're not going to move forward. The thing is, if you have to learn from it. Not make the same mistake, but if you fail, you have to have the, the strength to get back up and keep running. That was a big thing for me when I was a kid. 
if I fail, my first thing to do is like, all right, get up, let's keep going. Let me fail again so I can understand what not to do. Let me fail again. Yeah, like but that. don't do it to where you drive a company into the ground. Don't do that. <laughs> Just like fail responsibly, especially if you have, because one of the biggest things and another con, I guess I should say, that's kind of scary is that not only are you providing for these people that believe in your vision, um, because they're getting paid because of you. Like they they have their livelihoods because of you, which is scary to hold in your hand. Um, but make sure you, when you fail, you're strong enough to admit what you did wrong, and to to think and stew on it a little bit. Don't drive yourself into a depression, but just stew on it a little bit. Understand what happened. Get up and keep going. Like the intention has to be there to learn and to understand and not just yeah. to like be don't, right. Don't be arrogant. That's a big thing with me. Be nice, be genuine, but be vigilant. Any other advice for young adults in general? Make sure you just know basic life skills. <laughs> just because those basic life skills are like building blocks to your life going forward. Just be aware, have common sense, or at least fake like you have common sense. Just try not to do dumb stuff intentionally all the time, but enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself, enjoy the path that you're on, enjoy the journey that you're going on, because ultimately, it's only gonna fulfill you. Nothing's gonna fulfill you aside from you. And I don't care if you have a girlfriend, boyfriend, aunt, aunt whatever. Unless you find that fulfillment in yourself, nothing else is going to matter. That's so true. We don't have to talk about this, but we can if you're comfortable. But I know before we started this, we were talking about your mom and kind of the impact that she had on some of your like mindset and like how you feel. So would you want to talk about how your relationship with her shaped you? Who you yeah. Were? I don't mind that. So my mom's, uh, she's a single parent, and uh, she was very, I would say very tough. My mom actually really wasn't. My mom was the sweetest, nicest person to a fault, to be honest. And seeing how other people interacted with her, even my own family, and they were not the easiest people, it made me learn to stand up for not only myself, but for her. Not only for her, but for myself, I guess I should say. Um, my mom always didn't make the right, the best decisions, the right or the right decisions, but no parent does. And if they did, they, kudos to you, you're perfect. But I highly doubt if there's any parent that's like that. But uh, my mom is the driving force for why I do what I do, aside from my own in intentions. Like, I want to make sure, because she, she works, she has no savings, she has nothing. Um, but I want to ensure that she retires comfortably with a house that she can call home with, as she's been bring, pointing out a lot, my grandchildren, <laughs> like, that she can take care of, a car, the ability to travel and just live her life and enjoy herself. The way she, she raised me again, wasn't always the best, but I wouldn't change it. I just want to say thank you so much for all of your time and sharing how you're feeling and what your journey is like, ups and downs, and I really appreciate you taking the time to, to share that. I appreciate you uh, choosing to interview me. It's actually really cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.